Hello guys, welcome back here to the channel Chapaway Azul and Super Academico and today we're going to continue, maybe finish, who knows, the book New Rules of Sociological Method by Anthony Giddens. Here for all of you, here we are, keeping going with this playlist. I hope to finish this, this playlist today, I don't know if I can, but I'll try. Before I begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Only 20% of people who watch uh, uh, the videos, the channels, are subscribed to the channels. So please subscribe and give the like, comment, share, and let's go. So, continuing uh, this uh, fourth, I think, chapter, third, third chapter. This is the chapter, the production and reproduction of social life. The name of the, the, the item, the title is Relations of Power in Interaction. So the concept of power in sociology. Uh, this, the concept of, of power in sociology is very wild because uh, every, every tradition, every author, every a researcher can develop uh, its own, uh, their own concept of power. Uh, uh, the most famous, uh, I think, is Karl Marx, uh, uh, conceptualization of power. And I like very much the use of the concept of power by Michel Foucault too. The transformation, uh, the transformative ca capacity of human action by Marx is placed in a, in a very well uh, developed uh, a place in sociology because it shows the way that we as a species, uh, as a society, can transform the nature into culture, into work. Marxism, Marxism has a transformative capacity of action. Um, power in the sense of the transformative capacity of human agency is the capability capability of the actor to intervene in a series of events events so as to alter their course so like uh, uh, in this way the power of Brazilian people of changing the course of our uh, their history by voting in a different candidate for presidency what happened last year uh, for example uh, we we chose a candidate that changed the way the things were going so this is uh, an example of this kind of power that he's talking about here um, Perhaps the most famous formulation of power comes from Max Weber. Max Weber, according to whom power is the capacity of an individual to realize his will, even against the opposition. This is the use of the, the concept of power in a way of transforming or influence, uh, influence influencing uh, the others, uh, the other, other people by uh, a series of types of, of influence. Since power only exists when the resistance of others has to be overcome, their will subdue. Uh, it means that if I can do something and nobody is against what I'm doing, I don't have to use this power is consensus everybody wants the same thing but when i have to face opposition so i have to use the power of influence of force of violence whatever uh, uh, my charisma and everything that i can use to convince to make the others do what i want people's interests may fail to uh, coincide of course while power is a feature 
of every form of human interaction, division of interest is not. Um, power is a feature of every form of human interaction. Uh, there, there's always power relations. Division of interest is not. And it's not present in every relations. The use of power in interaction can be understood in terms of resources or facilities which participants bring to and mobilize as elements of its production. So it means that uh, the, the power relations uh, can, can work in a way to use certain tools to make things happen, to, to produce something and to transform to engage something <coughs> that participants bring news in the process this is the visual the this is the understanding of power in this way the rational, uh, rationalization of action via, uh, via common sense is a phenomenon of far-reaching importance to sociology since social sciences themselves themselves lay claim to be experts who are poor for voyeurs for voyeurs of authoritative knowledge uh, it means that uh, we as sociologists we rationalize things that people common people in society do that is like uh, our power to rationalize the actions of others. The motivation of action. Uh, we may use uh, of motivation, therefore, as referring to wants of which an actor may or may not be conscious, or may only become aware after he or she has carried out the act itself. And which a particular mood motive refers, in fact, confirms quite closely to lay usage. And it means that uh, what we do as scientists, as sociologists, is very close to what common people, lay people, né, use to, to rationalize, né, to understand the motivation for the actions. Well, I... I I highlight the infants. I don't know why. Maybe it's an, uh, an analogy about the action of a child. The production and reproduction of structure. Uh, there is the communicative intent. The collectiveness consists of interactions between members. Uh, the speech is an action. In interaction with language, the structure. So, uh, it's, it's talking about the construction of the structure in society by the use of language mainly, because the language is the way that we express symbolic our interaction. So, the structure is constructed, is made in the, the use of language. Uh, in some Generalizing these practices are the situated doings of subjects, of a subject, can be examined with regard to intended outcomes and may involve an orientation towards securing a response or range of responses from another to others. And the structure. Eh? On the other hand, has the specific socio-temporal locations, in characterize, in characterized, is characterized by the absence of a subject, and cannot be framed in terms of subject-object dialects. So, uh, if if I can understand this uh, in, in the correct way of what Giddens saying, we as people uh, we we do things in a way that we are in the in a structure but we act as subjects as as individuals 
so uh, in a way uh, there is no there is no relation there, there is no there is no dominated way of doing so because we're part of the structure now when we are acting we are part of the structure so we are not choosing so freely our actions because we're part of it uh, he mentions the the concept of structure by Lévi-Strauss né? Claude Lévi-Strauss functionalism from Spencer and Durkheim to Radcliffe Brown and Malinowski to Parsons and uh, he's mentioning this uh, classical names of sociology and anthropology that in a way or another spoke about uh, the, the the imposition of the structure over the individual the use of structure either structuralism or functionalism are in the same way this i'm saying that the the, the structure imposes the the action and uh, the, the way the individual action introduction uh, introducing the notion of structure structuration as the true explanatory locus of structural analysis uh, structuration it means that the way that a structure works on us we are structured by the structure <laughs> sorry this conjunction of words but this is that, that in portuguese it happens the same thing uh, a estruturação da estrutura, the estructuration of the structure. To study estructuration, to study estructuration, is to attempt to determine, determine the conditions which govern the continuity and dissolution of the structures or types of structure. So it's a comprehension of structure possibilities uh, made possible to the structure to exist language exists in as uh, as a structure as i said before and the rules of language are a uh, structure structured in summary what's in summary is the end of the chapter speech and language provide us with a series of useful clues as to how to conceptualize process of social production and reproduction you see language not because society is like a language but on the contrary because language as a practical activity is so central to social social life that in some basic respects it can be treated as exemplifying social process in general. That's what uh, Claude Lévi-Strauss did. He analyzed the society using the language as a model, as a model of structure. Three elements of the production of forms in interaction can be distinguished. All interactions involves attempted communication the operation of power and moral relations so there is a communication between the, the people the operation of power and the power relations and the moral relations is the value relations that happens in society i think that's it i don't know there was there was, there was uh, that was the summary of the third chapter I think I think uh, I, I won't be able to finish the book today. The fourth chapter is ahead, and the video is already 40 minutes, so I will not do this. I will finish in the next one, I think, with the fourth chapter and the conclusions. The fourth chapter is the form of explanatory accounts. So I hope you have enjoyed this video this finishing of the third chapter and i hope and i promise i'll try to finish in the next video with this fourth chapter and the conclusions i think i'll, I'll be able to and uh, please subscribe to the videos and oh sorry subscribe to the channels and like the videos and 
share and subscribe share and comments Com make comments I think for the people that have watched this the, the last chapter last week and comment the video it, it is important to have you comment the video because it, it makes the the YouTube to to offer uh, to suggest the, the, the video to the channel to other people so thank you very much for the attention see you next time